Hey guys, RC Anime here. I think one of the most neglected aspects of anime is sound. And that's unfortunate because anime is more than just a visual medium. What we see only serves half of the drama. The rest of the job is done by sound. Even when it comes to pure slapstick visual comedy, without the quirky music or the cartoony sound effects or the funny voice acting, the gag doesn't fly to its fullest effect. Ironically, people are more forgiving towards bad visual quality than they are to bad audio quality. Come on, it's lunch. The toasted cheese sandwich as well. I think this is because we relate to sound more than we do to sight. For example, I don't think any of us have ever been in a car chase heading into a sandstorm. Watching this scene from Mad Max Fury Road silently may make us feel indifferent, but put it along with the right soundtrack. Now we're pumped because the pounding percussions sound like a crazy heartbeat drugged by adrenaline. Of course, the relationship of audio and picture is no different in animation, especially in Serial Experiments Lane, a triumph of visual storytelling. The only thing is that most of the drama in Lane isn't invoked from what we see, but rather what we hear. From removing background tracks to change the status quo, to a father loudly typing on his keyboard ignoring his child, to shifting between different mannerisms and speech, each reflecting Lane's different personas. One of the most common ways to create drama with sound is by contrast. A lot of the show is generally quiet in a sort of trance, sometimes lacking any ambience at all. So whenever something relatively loud happens, it's more unsettling. The opposite works as well, throwing everything but a single line of dialogue into complete silence. Dr. Octagon, this is usually used as a checkpoint in the progression of the story. As after each time a moment like this happens, either someone dies or a character comes across something terrifying. Sometimes how the dialogue is spoken he, it's me. sets up our understanding of what may have happened to her character. Here the sentence is switched to clearly show the polarity between Mika before and after a series of events. The dialogue may also be filtered at times to differentiate between words being spoken in the wired and in reality. However, halfway through the show, the filtered dialogue in the wired begins to appear in the real world. In film, there are three kinds of sound. Diegetic, non-diegetic, and metadiegetic. Diegetic sound is any sound that's a part of the setting, be it a car, or music in a club. Non-diegetic sound is the opposite, normally either being the soundtrack or someone's voiceover. And metadiegetic is any sound that might be in a character's head. That's why you were stalking, huh? Waiting for the cops. But the overall verdict is ambiguous. That's ridiculous. Why should I call the police? Is she lying to him? I think I got ears. What about that? Or are the sirens just in his head? What about what? That police siren. Lane herself experiences the same dilemma. How much of what she hears is in the real world? Day. In the wired? Day. Or in her head? That is. Maybe it's all connected. The show is able to make us ask these questions because of how it treats its sound mixing. And by doing that, it sets up something dramatic for each character. <laughs> while also forcing the audience to engage as well. Oh, <laughs> 
This is because while sight is a primary sense, hearing is the confirming one. What I look for in a script is not so much specific references to specific sounds. He, he pulled the gun and fired it, that kind of thing. Uh, what I'm looking for is doors that are open to sound by playing with time and with point of view, principally, those two things. So what does the sound Mexican Lane tell us? Gotcha. Well, for one, it tells us that none of the characters are reliable perspectives as it becomes more and more difficult to differentiate between reality and the wired. This is why the sound mixing in Lane is so important to our understanding of the show. By recognizing all the rules it sets up in the beginning, we can more easily tell which scenes take place in reality, in the wired, or in a mix of both. By either hearing how the dialogue may be filtered, if the sound is diegetic or not, or if the ambience of wires is prevalent. And for a show as ambiguous as this one, it's pretty essential to learn its language in order to understand what's going on in Lane's world and mine. Because it's point of view. Uh, we're not describing an actual physical space necessarily, we're describing what's going on in the mind of the character. And so that's when sound design really becomes very much like music. And you don't seem to understand